when it comes to courtship, some birds go in for strange and wonderful antics. For others, fierce competition over females has led to the evolution of some spectacular displays. To attract a prospective partner, birds with a distinctive colouring show off their particular attributes to the best possible advantage. Courtship is an important prelude to breeding, and most birds form a close relationship which lasts throughout the season. Then their often touching and gentle displays serve to strengthen the bond between them. It's spring. The air is filled with bird song. Few birds are completely silent during courtship, and a great many rely on their voices to attract a mate. No sound is more eagerly awaited than the echoing call of the cuckoo. Heralding the arrival of summer, the repeated call is the male's courtship song. More melodious is the song of the nightingale. Its performances are best heard on warm, still evenings in late spring, when the males advertise their presence and compete to attract females arriving from their wintering grounds in Africa. The bubbling call of the curlew announces the start of its breeding season. Circling above traditional breeding grounds, the male birds trill their song to claim a mate and a territory below. Starlings don't rank amongst our most accomplished songbirds, but they are excellent mimics. They can incorporate the calls of other birds in their chattering song, and the broader their vocabulary, the greater their breeding success. This one has included the calls of a curlew and an oyster catcher in its repertoire. The love song of this bird can hardly be described as musical, but the boom of the bittern can be heard for up to a mile away. Most woodpeckers, like the red-bellied woodpecker from North America, have no song. Instead, they can produce a resounding drumming noise by tapping their bills on a dead bough. The male ruddy duck also drums to attract females. Beating his bill against his inflated neck forces air bubbles from under the feathers, and, in addition, produces a hollow tapping noise. And to emphasize his display, each drake develops a vivid blue bill at the start of the breeding season. Puffins also use their bills to advertise for a mate. Each spring, the normally muted colours of their bills flare into a rainbow of colours. Puffins pair for life, and bill rubbing helps to strengthen their bond. When a male frigate bird is ready for courtship, he too undergoes a colour change. In a flamboyant display to females circling overhead, each male inflates his throat pouch into an impressive scarlet balloon. In order to show off its most colourful asset, the blue-footed booby has developed some fancy footwork. Oh. 
More commonly, birds develop bright plumes to attract a mate. Even the male house sparrow, which is drab for most of the year, sports a black bib and distinctive head markings during the breeding season. The cryptic colouring of the Corrie Bustard, like the house sparrow, is designed to conceal the bird from predators. So, in order to attract passing females, each male stages an impressive display. The peacock has no need to put on much of an act. The effect of fanning its magnificent plumes is dazzling enough. In comparison, the pea hen is dull, but she must remain inconspicuous as the males play no part in incubation. The birds of paradise from Papua New Guinea are famous throughout the world for their exquisite plumes. As with the peacock, the males have no parental duties, so can afford to spend considerable time and energy on visual effects. The iridescent plumes and magnificent displays are designed to attract females through the dense forests in which these birds live. But females are not the only ones drawn by bright colors. To the local tribesmen, the feathers represent wealth and status. On ceremonial occasions, each warrior parades in his entire collection. Once, thousands of birds were killed for the European hat trade. Nowadays, hunting is restricted, even for the locals. Fortunately for the long-tailed widow bird which lives in Africa, its two-foot-long plumes are not considered to be valuable collector's items. The slow, jerky, almost mechanical action of the male bird's courtship flight, seen here in slow motion, is designed to attract a female by accentuating its striking shoulder patches. More complicated and equally spectacular are the displays of the European ruff. During the breeding season, each male develops long ear tufts and an elaborate collar. No two males are exactly alike. The ruff may be black, brown or chestnut, plain or speckled, and the ear tufts in either complementary or contrasting colors. The males gather in traditional courtship arenas called leks. The mature males occupy courts of about a square foot within the center of the lek. They defend these sites favored by the females from all other competitors except the so-called satellite males. Satellites always have conspicuous white ruffs and are tolerated in any of the central courts because their distinctive plumage attracts more females. As soon as a drab female, called a reeve, enters the lek, all the males put on their best displays in an attempt to win her favors. In the highlands of Scotland, one morning in April, the first blackcocks gather at their traditional lecking grounds. The male black grouse or blackcocks stage ritual fights to establish territories within the lek. Fanning his tail, drooping his partly open wings and inflating his neck, each male carries out formal encounters with his neighbors.
Only the most vigorous birds commanding the central positions will have a chance with the hens when they arrive later. Like their European relatives, the American members of the grouse family also congregate at traditional sites called booming grounds. The inflatable air sacs of the male sage grouse serve to increase the resonance of their strange booming calls, which attract females from miles around. The prairie chicken is smaller and less bulky than the sage grouse, but what it lacks in size, it makes up for in performance. In some species, the competition between males is so fierce that a fine performance is simply not enough to win a mate. In Africa, the end of the rains marked the beginning of the breeding season for the finch-like quelia. Thousands of birds gather at communal nesting grounds, and within a few days, every bush is alive with courting birds. Males are selected on their merits as master craftsmen, and the females ignore their frantic displays until they have started to build delicate nests. Within two hours, the ring from which the nest will be suspended is complete. Now the female shows signs of interest. It takes about two days for each male to complete a nest. The females make no contribution to the building work, but they keep a careful eye on the proceedings. Each male may have to build several nests before successfully attracting a mate. To lure females into their domain, the bower birds of Australia, as their name implies, build a bar. The spotted bower bird constructs a corridor of grass in which to court a mate. As compensation for his plain looks, the male bird decorates the bar with strange ornaments. Once these birds relied on bright berries and flowers, but nowadays they have a wide range of modern materials to choose from. A female sandwich tern will not fully accept a male until she has received a gift from him. Courtship feeding in many species serves to strengthen the pair bond and it provides the female with extra nourishment to form her eggs. The courtship behavior of the pheasant-tailed jacana is quite remarkable. At the beginning of the breeding season, both sexes acquire a smart breeding plumage, but the female is larger than the male and has a longer tail. The females establish large territories which they vigorously defend from other hen birds. Males form their own smaller territories within those of the females. When a female is ready to mate, she moves into a male's territory within her domain and performs a crouching display to solicit his attention. The swampland habitat of the jacana is a hazardous place to nest, and they lose many eggs to predators. The males alone build a nest, incubate the eggs, and rear the family. This leaves the females free to lay as many eggs in as many nests as possible.
courtship isn't always a one-sided affair. In fact, over 90% of birds form a close partnership which lasts throughout the season. White storks may pair for several seasons, returning year after year to the same nest. The mutual display cements the bond between them, and it helps to synchronize their breeding activities so that they are ready to mate at the same time. Their close bond enables the birds to stay together and share the parental duties, as well as form a united front if their claim to the nest is threatened. Immature birds prospecting for their first nest and mate will often challenge an established pair although they rarely stand a chance of success. To celebrate their victory and to reinforce their relationship, the mature pair perform a bill clapping display. White-bellied sea eagles pair for life. Although their partnership may last for 30 years, the male courts the female anew at the start of each breeding season. Their tumbling aerial acrobatics serve as a territorial display and one of courtship at the same time. displays of some birds may appear a little odd. Whenever a pair of hammer cop get excited, they perform a strange ceremony called false mounting. It's partly a way of strengthening the pair bond, but it also seems to be their way of letting off steam. The king cormorant's display is much more subtle. In the South Atlantic where they nest, the summer is short, so by mid-spring, the breeding season is in full swing. Sharing the islands with the cormorants are colonies of black-browed albatross, their fencing display has a gentle, almost tender quality. It helps to relieve the tension they experience as the birds gradually get to know each other. to mating in the great crested grebe is long and complicated. Head shaking is their most common ritual. If a pair becomes separated for any length of time, they reunite with a strange greeting ceremony called a discovery display. final stages of their courtship, they perform their most coordinated ritual. It's called a weed or penguin dance. Mm -hmm. 
The courtship performance of the Western Grebe from North America is spectacular in the extreme. Soon after it is light on the island of Hokkaido in Japan, small parties of cranes fly into their feeding grounds. The Japanese call these birds the marsh gods. They are considered a charm against evil. Their true name is the red-crowned crane, and like all cranes, they are monogamous, remaining faithful to their mate for life. Courtship is a year-round affair for cranes. The red crest on their head swells when they're excited. It is a clear sign of their mood. Cranes will dance at any time of year. But as they prepare for the breeding season at the end of winter, their feet hardly seem to touch the ground. The complex rituals of courtship are not only the basis on which each bird selects a mate, but they also serve to keep the pair united for most birds, this is vitally important, as parenthood must be shared between male and female if their young are to have any chance of survival. Yeah.